In today's video, we're going to look at the Milwaukee MX Fuel Carry On. This is a portable power station or battery generator that's designed to give you electricity wherever you need it. And when this was announced last year, I really went nuts because this was the first time that a huge company like this created a battery power station that was designed for job sites and heavy duty use. And now a year later, I finally got one in hand to test out, but unfortunately it wasn't worth the wait. And in this video, I'm going to show you the unit in detail and share what I found out about it that made this thing one of the worst power products I've ever reviewed. When you first take this out of the box, you're going to be happy because the design is very cool. Looks just like a commercial gas generator. It's got an all steel cage around it and the thing definitely looks rugged. It weighs about 59 pounds with the batteries installed and they did a good job by placing this handle in the center and it's pretty easy to carry with even just a single hand. Overall, the portability is good, but it's all about the power. Now this thing can put out 1800 watts of running power and additionally it can handle 3600 watts of surge power. And that power is generated by their MX Fuel batteries. Now this kit includes two of them, but you can actually run it using just a single one. And these batteries are built really well. They've got a heavy duty rubber coating. And another huge plus is to charge it up just requires a regular extension cord. So you don't have to lug around any kind of AC adapter. And you can charge the batteries in about 90 minutes each. But this is where things start to get a little weird. You can't charge both batteries at the same time. When you plug that cord in, it has to charge the first one and then it'll automatically switch over to the second. So you're looking at about three hours to charge this thing from empty. And that brings us to our first weird feature. You can turn the unit on and use the power from those outlets, but as soon as you plug in the recharging cable, it automatically switches the outlets off. So you cannot use the power from the outlets while you're recharging it. And this makes no sense to me since most units on the market allow you to do that now. And here's some more bad news. All you get is 220 volt AC outlets. There's no covers on them. They're not tamper resistant, but they do include this ground screw for use on some commercial job sites. And now I wanted to test this thing out, so I'm going to check for the quality of power and how long this unit can actually run. And to do that, I'm using a Tektronix power quality analyzer. This is a lab grade instrument, it's certified, and there's really no better way to see what's actually coming out of those outlets. Our first screen shows us voltage, total harmonic distortion, and frequency. Now the voltage is a little weird at 113 because it could have been 110 or 120. But the good news is the total harmonic distortion is under 1% and that's actually very good. And here's our power is sine wave and that's a pure sine wave which is a good thing and that means this unit is in fact putting out clean power. But the good news didn't last for long because here we're going to do a runtime test. And we're going to use this 1200 watt heater going through the Tektronix. Batteries were fully charged when I started the test. The heater is running and the power analyzer is keeping an eye on what's going on. Now remember the batteries are replaceable which is good if they run out. But at $599 each, they're not a cheap investment at all. Test didn't take long to run and when it was done, this unit's capacity is only 754 watt hours. Now that is really terrible by pretty much any battery generator standard. And what that means is you can only run 754 watts for one hour. Now even though the runtime was really bad, I wanted to test out those surge watts because they advertise this thing as being able to handle 3600 watts. Now that's designed to cover startup loads and bigger pieces of equipment. Now I've got my old air compressor that's a snap-on with a 5 horsepower motor and this thing runs on 120 volts using a 20 amp circuit. Now to date, I've never had any battery generator ever be able to start this thing up successfully. And now we're going to arm the device. Now if you think that phrase is stupid, I agree with you and that's what they actually call it in the manual. They don't say you're turning it on or starting it up. Now that's the weirdest thing I've ever heard, but let's go ahead and arm it and see if it can run the compressor. And I'm really impressed because nothing has ever been able to start this thing up before. But unfortunately with the short run time, you're not going to be able to run it very long at all. I also tested out overloading this thing by connecting my 1200 watt heater back up while the compressor was running. So I was way over the 1800 watts and in a short amount of time it aired out and the unit shut down. But this is exactly what it was supposed to do. And now let's look at what must be the worst feature and what makes this the most expensive clock that Milwaukee could ever sell. Now here I'm connecting up a heater and this LED light. But I'm only going to put the heater in fan mode and together these two items are using about 50 watts of power. Now if you picture you using this, say you're in a crawl space or a basement doing some plumbing, you might be using this to supply your lighting. 
Well, unfortunately, Milwaukee designed this thing to shut off at exactly one hour if you're using anything less than 80 watts of power. Now, that makes no sense to me, and I put it to the test, and at 60 minutes, this is what I got. That has to be the worst feature of any battery generator I've ever seen, and you're gonna be constantly rearming the device. This is a really weird design because you can't turn this feature off, and I think they did it because the cooling fan inside this is not smart either. As Soon as you turn this thing on, the fan's just running a full blast all the time, and you might think that fan's doing a great job because it's sucking air on one side and blowing it out the other, but unfortunately, if you look inside, you can see a lot of exposed circuits and wires that don't really look like they're protected at all. Now long term, if you use this in a construction environment, that doesn't seem like it's going to be a good thing. Another huge negative is there's only one way to charge it, and that's to plug it in the wall. There's no solar, no car option, which really limits you, and especially if you were using this for construction, you might want to charge it while you're driving between jobs. There's no display and very little information. You've got battery gauges on the batteries and some warning lights, but you don't even know how much power you're drawing or estimated time that you have left. Overall, I'm very disappointed. I expected a lot more, especially for this being so high priced, and I'm not really sure who this would be right for. If you had a very high powered device that you wanted to run for a short amount of time, then this would be an ideal fit. But I think for most people, you'd be a lot better off to buy something like a Jackery that's less than half the price and actually will give you more runtime. And if you disagree with what I've shown, please feel free to comment below. But either way, I hope I shared some good information for you to consider if you're even thinking about buying one of these. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up.